Welcome to part two of Let's Play Legend of Zagor by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 192, and I was about to decide whether to use an open spell or try to force the doors. Um, I will just say that I think at the end of the last part, I might have said um, that the paragraph um, with which I was going to start the next video was 191. Um, I don't know why I said that if I did say it, because it was 192, and I did write down 191, uh, but I changed it to 192 there. Um, no idea why I did that. Anyway, just before I decide which spell, or, or rather what to use, or, or what to do, there we go, um, I have a quick read of, of the Grimoire, um, because I haven't read that yet. I'll just read the entrance uh, to the spell um, of which it's talking, of which um, about which that paragraph was talking. Anyway, um, the Amarillion Grimoire. Each spell costs one magic point to cast unless otherwise noted. If the spell is found by picking up a scroll, the same number of magic points is required to cast it. Um, for spells which can be cast immediately before a combat, you may cast only one before each combat. You cannot, for example, cast both the skill spell and the fast hand spell before a combat. Only one spell is allowed. Okay, so let's have a look at the open spell. Uh, this simple spell opens one trapped treasure chest or locked door safely. Bit of a tongue twister there. If the chest or door has a trap, it is rendered harmless by the spell, even even it if... Look, it said even it if. Um, even if it is a magic trap. Um, you cannot cast this spell during combat. They really should employ me for these... Uh, um, in order to edit these books, but um, at the time of this book's uh, uh, release, I was uh, quite young and I didn't apply for the job, um, assuming it existed. So that's why. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think I'd be pretty good at it if I can spot these things. Anyway, so we need to use a magic point um, for this open spell. So let's do that immediately. So let's put that, uh, put that down to six. There we go. And then let's go to 103. Because we've used the uh, open spell. Here we go. There's a tripwire trap behind the doors, but fortunately you see it and step over safely. You now stand in the great entrance hall of Castle Argent. Flanking the long walls here are pennants and shields of the provinces of Amarillia, but many have been defaced or broken and flung to the stony floor. Irregularly placed wall torches burn dimly and provide a low light enough to see by, but they also suggest there must be living creatures herein, and this spells danger. There is a door to either side of this entrance, and from behind one of them you can make out the grunts and guttural speech of orcs. Uh, they will surely be simple guards, with no gold or items of value, so it's pointless wasting your strength on them. You edge forward as quietly as you can. Before you there is a small door to your left and one to your right, and a pair of larger doors directly ahead. Will you now open uh, the large, um, the, large uh, the right hand door, turn to 20, uh, the left hand door, turn to 318, or the large doors ahead, turn to 376. We're going to open the large doors ahead, so turn to 376. There we go. You stand with your back to the doors at the end of the entrance hall, looking west. Immediately in front of you is another pair of double doors. While to the north, a passageway stretches out for many metres, or yards, I, I, I'd rather use like, uh, yards. I mean, it just seems a bit pretentious using metres, a bit contrived, because... Well, not really pretentious, yeah, um, a bit contrived, because... Um, I mean, metres weren't invented until like the 18th century or something, near the French Revolution, and this is set in sort of like medieval times. I mean, they would have used yards or feet. Anyway, there are two doorways further along on the west side of this northbound passage and a door at the end of it, and it turns back eastwards far in the distance. To your left, the passage soon turns west. Explore an area you have not entered before. Will you head for the west passage? Turn to 3. Open the double doors in front of you. Turn to 359. Open the first door along the north passage. Turn to 38. Open the second door along the north passage. Turn to 347. Or go all the way to the end of the North Passage and turn to 155. Okay, just before I decide that, I will just talk about the metric system quickly. Um, it really annoys me how um, how people um, complain about America 
oh no, they don't use the metric system, they're so backward. And they, um, and, and they sort of use, um, in my opinion, bad arguments for why the metric uh, why the imperial system rather is bad i mean you know they say that there was like a like this meme that i saw that uh, that said something like um oh you know it was implied that metric system is the better one because oh metric it's a uh, hundred centimeters in a meter a thousand meters in a kilometer not you know nice round powers of 10 and then it said oh isn't imperial imperial uh, uh, system stupid or oh, you have um, one inch, twelve inches in a foot, three feet in a yard, and one thousand seven hundred sixty yards in a mile. You know, that's a bad argument, and I'll explain why. Admittedly, they're not as perfectly round powers of ten. You know, because the metric system was artificial; it didn't evolve naturally like the imperial system did. You know, from people's culture and that. That's one reason why I'm in favour of the imperial system. It's 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 a cultural thing. I mean, and people moan about it. Yet America managed to get a man on the moon using the imperial system. So uh, no other country has managed to do that. So obviously that's a point in favour of the uh, a point in favour for the imperial system. And anyway, uh, um, um, what, what was I saying? Yeah. So um, yeah, but it's it's a flawed argument because they they don't know the other measurements that no one uses in the imperial system. They don't know that yeah, there's 12 inches in a foot, three feet in a yard. But then they don't know that uh, there are 22 yards in a chain, and then there are 10 chains in a furlong, which is 220 yards, and then there are eight furlongs exactly in a mile. He, he, you know, they're still not perfect powers of 10, but they're nicer numbers. They're not ridiculous. You know, something that sounds ridiculous, uh, something that sounds ridiculous, like 1,760, is there's there's a perfect eight furlongs in a mile. 220 times eight is 1,760 yards. That's it. And then if, if and, and if you want how many feet in a mile, multiply that by three and you get uh, 1,700 times three is 5,100 and, and the 60 times three is 180. So it'd be uh, 5,280 feet in a mile but you know but so it, it, it wasn't intended to be like 1760 yards in a mile you know something more, you're supposed to go up bit by bit you know and uh you know i mean if you take a, if you take a, um, a measurement of area if you take the measurement of area the only imperial sort of one that isn't a square mile or whatever like uh, which is the acre i mean that really is 220 yards by 22 yards it's a chain by a furlong so you know it, it isn't a perfect square it, you know a perfect square would be 22 squared which would be 484 so 22 times 220 would be 4840 and that's how many square yards there are inside an acre anyway but um i digress again but um you know, and um, not many people know that the you know the unit of the metric unit of area, which is a hectare. I mean, not many people know what a hectare. Yes, yeah, ten thousand square meters. But why is it called a hectare and not something like ten thousand square meters? You know, and that's because there's there's a unit there's a there's a metric unit of measurement. You know, that's what annoys me about people who talk about the metric system. They talk about it as if it's brilliant, but they don't even know most of the measurements. They don't even know most of the prefixes like I do. I mean, I don't even you know. I prefer imperial over the metric system, but I know more about the metric system uh, than, than the so-called proponents of it. I mean, you know, uh, if you have a hectare, that, um, I mean, the prefix hect um, or hecto means a hundred, hundred of something. So a hectometer is a hundred meters. So, um, uh, yeah, so if you have something like a hectare, it's hect and then air, A-R-E, and an air is a hundred square meters. You know, that's what an air is, an AR is, 100 square metres. And a centiaire, which is a hundredth of an air, is a square metre. Not many people know that. You know, but they, they talk about hectares, but no one really knows what a hectare or where it comes from. And the same thing annoys me about the metric, uh, the, the proponents of metric system. They don't, you know, they don't even know all the prefixes. I know all the prefixes. You know, even the newer ones they invented in like 1991 or whatever it was. You know, there's um, Yocto, which is 10 to the power of minus 24 um which is naught point twenty three noughts and then one that would be a yoctometer and then there's there's a zeptometer that would or zepto which is ten to the power of minus twenty one and, and then and then there's an atometer 
which would be 10 to the power of minus 18. Then, then there's femto, which is 10 to the power of minus 15. Um, then there's uh, pico, 10 to the power of minus 12. Nano, which everyone's heard of, of course, because, because of nanometer. Um, that's 10 to the power of minus 9. That's a billionth in using the short scale, um, even though I do prefer the long scale for various reasons. But, um, yeah, using the short the short scale. I mean, really, a billion is a million millions using the long scale. But in the short scale, a, a billion is a thousand million. Anyway, so um, a billionth using the short scale is a nanometer, 10 to the power of minus 9. And 10 to the power of minus 6 is, is micro, so a millionth a millionth of a meter, a thousandth of a millimeter, and there's milli, which is a thousandth, everyone knows that, and then when you get closer to one, then it's, um, or tenth of a power of naught, then you get you get more of them, so everyone knows centi for a hundredth, and then not, there are not many people use deci, which is tenth, it's a perfectly good one, uh, uh, ten centimeters in a decimeter, then ten decimeters makes a meter, um, uh, um, and then there's, um, uh, um, and then for ten, not tenth, ten, for 10 meters, it would be a decameter, which is either DEC or DEK. Uh, you know, that, that, that's how you spell it. And then there's 100, which I already said, which would, be, which would be hectometer. Then 1,000, which is kilo. And then after the 1,000, then it goes up by 1,000 again. Then there's mega for million. Um, then there's giga, um, or jigger, as, as it was originally intended to be pronounced. And they pronounce it correctly on um, um, Back to the Future when he says gigawatts. That's what he means. Uh, that's what he means. He actually means giga, but no one says jigga anymore, unfortunately. It's a bit like people saying Genghis Khan when really it was actually Genghis. It always annoys me when I hear people say Genghis Khan because it was actually Genghis Khan. Um, yeah, then there's giga. Um, then there's terra, like a terabyte, which is um, um, a thousand billion or a trillion. And uh, then there's peta, then exa. Then the two new ones they invented in 1991, I think, um, are zeta and yotta, which are like the they're the two small ones I explained earlier. But yeah, but no one knows that. I mean, you know, everyone just thinks, oh, it's a thousand metres in a kilometre. No one knows the hectometre thing. That's what annoys me about proponents of the metric system. They don't even know their own system well. Anyway, and they don't even understand the, the imperial system well either. It's just a stupid argument. Anyway, enough of that. Anyway, so we're going to... Um, we're going to open the second door along the north passage to so turn to 347 i mean it's simple enough to uh it's simple enough if you want to know both i mean all on wikipedia anyway I mean, if you want to but i knew them before wikipedia but uh you know there's no need to say oh metric or imperial i think metric has its place in sort of like real yeah, um, in science but i think imperial should be used for day to day i think i think metric should just be used for science you know and for really a, for technological stuff i think imperial should should still keep um um, um day to day a uh, day to day use because it's it's part of culture and it's um, um, it's um, heritage and everything uh, you know you shouldn't just give it up easily just to, just to appease the uh, you know the the people you don't care about culture and heritage. Anyway, now the door here is wedged tight, um, but you manage to force it open, and you find yourself in a smithy. There is a great forge fire in the south wall, but its flames have long been dimmed. Any weapons or armour once here have evidently been looted, but you may take a strong iron rod you find here. Um, if in future you are asked to test your skill to force open a locked or tightly shut door, you may subtract one from the total rolled for using this strong bar to help you open the door. Okay, let's put that down. We have a strong, strong iron rod. Subtract one from skill test, I'll say. Actually, you start a new line. There we go. Um, oh, it, it, um, it's only for doors. Sorry, for skill test. Four doors only. There we go. <clears throat> okay, where were we? And then, um, what are we doing? Yeah, um, leaving this room and looking east along the corridor opposite the door, you can see two doors to your left. Uh, the first of these is particularly strong and contains a heavy lock. You should now explore an area you haven't entered before. 
So will you open the first door along to your left, turn to 105, open the second door along to your left, turn to 269, and head back south and search elsewhere, turn to 376. Um, what are we going to do? Open the second door along to your left, I think, 269. Uh, the door here is half ajar and you push it open easily, that the room beyond must have been a guest chamber. The comfort of the bed, furniture and rugs here suggest that. It was looted long ago, of course. Uh, the bed sags in the middle from orcs jumping up and down on it. And the fine rosewood... what a strange... Um, what's, what a strange thought. Um, and the fine rosewood table and chairs have had orcish names carved crudely into them. If you want to make a prolonged search, turn to 2, otherwise turn to 33. Okay, we're going to make a prolonged uh, search, so turn to 2. You must eat a meal during your time here. Okay, let's take off a meal. So we're down to 11 now. Remember, if, if we're forced to eat one, that means if we don't eat one, we lose two stamina points. And, and we don't get the four stamina points from um, eating one when we don't need them. So well, we, when the paragraph doesn't force us to. So we're down to 11 now. So, uh, so, um, so we just don't lose any stamina points. If, as long as we have some left, of course. Um, stuffed inside a pillow, you find a magic ring. What's more, you also find a scroll with an open spell stuffed under the mattress. Gain one luck point for this find, turn to 33. Okay, so we have a magic ring. I'll just put magic rings here separately. Magic ring. Magic rings, uh, one, yep. Okay, um... We don't need a luck point, do we, because we're at maximum luck. Well, oh, no, we're not, actually. Sorry. No, we're not. Yes, we can put it back to seven. I apologise. Yeah, we did use a luck point, didn't we? So we're back to seven. That's that's pretty good. Didn't, I didn't remember I used one. Uh, also find a scroll with an open spell. Okay. Oh, scroll with open spell. Good. Um, I'll just put this under. Scroll... With open spell. Okay. Uh, turn to thirty-three. I still don't understand this this scroll malarkey. I'm gonna search the thing in here and see if I can find where scroll is written. All adventures can also cast magic spells from magic scrolls discovered during the adventure. Although one magic point must be spent to cast a spell from the scroll. Oh, I see, right. Oh, I see. So, if you're Salazar, then you can just use them in the thing. You can just use them from the Amarillion Grimoire. But if you have the scroll, the scrolls are for the other characters, really. So, what's the point of me having a scroll, then? There's not much point in me having a scroll, because I can just use the Grimoire. Yeah. Can't see the point of me keeping a scroll. Yeah, it, yeah. I don't understand the point of me taking that scroll because I can use the grimoire anyway because I be, uh, because I'm Salazar. You know, it says it in the character thing. Uh, what does it say about the... Uh... Yeah, Salazar, what's... Say advantages, won't it, or something. Fiddle dee dee. Here we are, advantages. Salazar... Hmm all it says about him. Really. I mean, I can't see the point of having a... I can't see the point of having the, the scroll if you... Yeah, 
Yeah, he alone can use any of these. Spells. There's no point in Salazar having a scroll, is there? Anyway, it turned, I'll keep it anyway, but 33. Yeah. That's the point of the scroll. You know, you can use the spell, but, but Salazar already knows them all anyway. So he doesn't need any scrolls. Yeah, you know, the scrolls are only for the other characters who don't know, you know, because they're not wizards. Anyway, you leave the looted guest chamber and turn to make your way back west. Test your spot skill. If you're successful, turn to 141. If you fail, turn to 376. Okay, we have to test our skill. Spot skill. So we just need this to be less than or equal to our current skill score. Two, two dice. So it needs to be less than or equal to 10. So here we go. And we get 7. So that's good, but we don't have to subtract anything. So we were successful in that uh, endeavour. So... Uh, yep, yeah. successful, turn to 141. You spot a secret door at the end of the passage, flush with the east wall. If you want to open it, uh, having not done so before, turn to 171. If you would rather not, you will have to head back west and south to explore elsewhere. Turn to 376. Okay, 171 then because we do want to open it, that's the whole point of being successful. Um, a chiselled set of stone steps leading north lies behind the secret door. There's a sticky, slimy substance on the floor, so you, uh, so you descend carefully. It is dark here, so you need a lantern or a light spell to light your way. Do I have a lantern? Yes, I do. Good. Right. Lantern or a light spell to light your way. If you do not use one or or other, or the other, you will stumble and fall heavily, losing two stamina points. The steps end at a landing with a single door opposite you. Um, the door doesn't look very strong, nor is it locked, but there is a glowing pattern of magical runes on it. If you are Salazar, you can read these runes, turn to 386. Otherwise, you can simply open the door, turn to 339. Use an open spell to bypass the runes if you can. Turn to 110, or decide not to take the risk and search elsewhere, turn to 386. Okay, so we can read the runes because we're Salazar, so we're going to turn to 386. Here we go. Now, the runes are a magical warning to keep out, and you judge that there is a dark elf element in their design. You are also slightly puzzled because they don't look like standard wizard's runes. This makes you uncertain about the kind of spell-using creature that might have put them here. Test your spot skill. If you are successful, turn to 23. If you fail, you can cast an open spell on the door, turn to 110. Open it normally, turn to 139, or think better of it and search elsewhere, turn to 136. Okay, so we're testing spot skill again, so it needs to be less than or equal to 10. And we get 4, so we were successful, get rid of the buzzing. There we go. Brilliant. Okay, so turn to 23, because we were successful. Yep, 23. There's a strange twist. Uh, there's a strange twist to these runes. Um, what they are is a trap laid against mag What they are is a trap laid against magical entry. You realise that had you cast an open spell, you would have set off the trap. This tells you that whoever is behind the door is scared of wizards in particular. You can now open the door normally, turn to 339, or decide to leave and search elsewhere, turn to 376. Okay, we're going to open the door normally, turn to 339. A lot of paragraphs just for a door, if you ask me, which of course you don't. Okay, um, in this subterranean room, there is a vast jumble of furnishings and bric-a-brac, uh, um, bric rather. Um, and all the walls are inscribed with magical symbols and signs. You see the single occupant of the room, a cowering, emaciated dark elf with a thin dagger in one hand and a small trail of fine ash drifting from the other as he prepares to cast a spell at you. Um, in case you, I'm not trying to patronise anyone here, but in case anyone doesn't know what bric-a-brac is, it's sort of like um, uh, um, sort of like uh, um, general odds and sods, just sort of um, jumble. That's what it means. Anyway, um, you know, I'm not trying to patronise anyone, anyone, you know, but if you just in case you don't know, and, and I've just saved you from googling it because it is slightly strange. Anyway, um, in my opinion, anyway. If you are Salazar, you can make out what the magical wall designs mean, so turn to 306. 
Otherwise, you have several options here. If you want to attack the Dark Elf, turn to 258. If you would rather parley, do you think you know what his name is? If you do, convert the name to a number using the code A equals 1, B equals 2, Z equals 3, and so on. Add together the numbers corresponding to the letters in his name, then turn to the paragraph with that number. Unless the name you guess is the first word in that paragraph, you are wrong, and you will be forced to fight. Make a note to turn to 258 if this happens. If you don't know his name, but you, do, but you still want to parley with him, turn to 289. If you decide to make a run for it, turn to 198. Okay, so we are Salazar, so we're going to turn to 306. I had to read the rest of the paragraph just for completion. Just to see what we've avoided, the annoyance we've avoided. Okay, the magical circles are protective. The occupant of this room is clearly terrified of some form of magical attack by a wizard, and you guess he isn't going to parley, parley with you. There we go. If you trade spells in combat with the Dark Elf who lives here, you must subtract two from your attack strength there when you cast a spell because of these defences. <clears throat> if you want to attack the Dark Elf, turn to 258. If you decide to run, turn to 198. Okay, so we're going to attack the Dark Elf, but we have to remember to, to subject 2 from our attack strength. So we're going to attack him, turn to 258. He's a Dark Elf, after all. 258, as we come this far. You are engaged in mortal combat with the crazed Dark Elf. In the first attack round, he will try to attack you with a fireball spell. And if he has the higher attack strength, you will lose 4 stamina points from the burning flames that cover your body. If you have the higher attack strength, you strike him and ruin his spell. Thereafter, the Dark Elf will fight with his dagger. If at any time you decide to flee, turn to 198. Skill 8, stamina 10 for Dark Elf Wizard. Okay. Excuse me just for a moment, I'm going to uh, turn the light on, it's a bit dark in here. Right, that's better. Okay, so let's put Dark Elf Wizard. Skill 10, Skill 8, Stamina 10. Don't need it there. Okay, um, right, so we have to subtract 2 from uh, from our attack strength every time. And if he gets us in the first attack round, then he gets 4 stamina points instead of 2 stamina points off us. That's pretty much it. Right, it was 8-10, wasn't it? 8-10, yeah. Okay, so let's get the, you know, the old dice program. Here we go. All right, so for him, he's 8, so 2 dice and add it to 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. So his one is 16. I have skill 10. 10 plus 6 is 16, but I have to subtract 2, making it down to 14, so he wins. So that's uh, 16 to 14. That is pretty annoying, actually. Uh, you know, because it, it was equal, but oh well. So he takes off 4 stamina points because of the uh, fire spell thing, but it only counts for the first attack round, so that's pretty nasty. Right, so let's keep going. Okay, 8 plus 5 is 13. I get 7 plus 10 is 17. Take off 2 is 15. So 13 to 15. So I win the next one, of course. That puts him down to 8 stamina. Brilliant. Okay, and again. Oops, wrong one. Okay, he gets 8 plus 8 is 16 again. I get uh, 16 to 14 again. Again, that happens. If you can hear the buzzing, yes, that is annoying. Right. right okay, next then. Okay, he gets a 7, that's uh, 15. I get a 12, that's 22, 20, because minus the 2. So, uh, what was it? Yeah, 15 to 20, so I win that. 15 to 20, that puts him down to 6, lovely. Okay, no, I don't know again. Okay, he gets um, a 2, that's 10, and I get a 7, that's um, 15, because minus the 2, so 10 to 15. And then that puts him down to 4, just two more hits. Okay, he gets um, an 11, that's annoying, that's uh, 19. I get a 12, that's 22 minus 2 is 20. Oh, that was close. 19 to 20, blimey. This is uh, knuckle whitening, isn't it? So I win that, and that puts him down to 2. 
on the edge of your sh on the edge of your seat. I'm not going to say that on the on the edge of your sheet. Uh, anyway, um, anyway, he gets a seven. That's uh, fifteen. I, uh, I get a five. That's thirteen. So fifteen to thirteen, he wins. He gets the last laugh before he dies. Fifteen to thirteen. That puts me down to sixteen stamina. Wonderful. Whoops. Full stop. There we go. Why do Americans call full stop a period? I mean, it's just strange. A period, you know, when I've you know, not thinking of the disgusting definition, but a period is like a period of time, you know. Why does it have anything to do with punctuation? Anyway, so yeah, I still need one more. Okay, he gets a ten, brilliant. That's eighteen. I get eight. That's sixteen. Oh, God. Okay, I mean, you might as well put your skill down by two for this fight, really. Eighteen to sixteen, so he gets another last laugh. Puts me down to 40. Nasty little dark elf, this isn't it? Right. Right, he gets an 8. That's uh, 16. I... 16 to 14. Another last laugh. And this time a 16 to 14. He is one tenacious little bugger, isn't he? Considering it is I that give him strength with with my dice rolls. Uh, okay, he gets uh, eleven. That's nineteen. I get six. That's fourteen. Brilliant. Nineteen to fourteen. Oh, the hell. This is beyond a joke now. I'm getting dangerously close to no health. All right. Okay. Next. Okay. He gets. Um, he gets an 8, that's 16. Oh. 16 to 14, again, that's like the, four t the fourth time, isn't it? I mean, seriously, this is uh, annoying. If I die, I'll have to start the fight again, because I'm not screwing around with starting the book again. Alright, okay. Right. He gets a 3, thank you. That's 11, and I get 9, that's 17. Thank you, you're dead. Right, 11 to 19, finally. Now, what was it? No, 11 to 17, so we have to subject 2, don't we? Right, you are dead, you little critter, blimey. Good riddance. Right, Gordon Bennett, that was a lot of hell I lost. Oh, what am I doing? Whoops, wrong one. There we go, getting rid of the buzzing. Right, where was I? If you win, yeah, if, me. if you win, you can search the room. This takes some time, however, since everything is so cluttered. So you must eat a meal. And I'll, even better news. Even better. It's another meal. So we're down to ten. Let's even get our health back. Because, uh, you know, we have to eat one. Eventually you find three gold pieces. A fine silk tapestry worth four gold pieces. If you can find someone to whom to sell it. Right. So we're up to uh, three gold pieces. That puts it up to 14. Um, gold. Whoops. Gold tapestry worth. Whoops. Four gold. That counts as sort of uh, gold, doesn't it? As long as I can find someone to whom to sell it. Um, a scroll with an open spell inscribed upon it, and a magic ring. So we have another open... that's two. Oh, I just put two, there we go. Um, another magic ring, so we're up to two of them now. Um, this is a good haul, so gain one luck point. There's also a diary which shows that the Dark Elf once served the Bone Demon whose army decimated Castle Argent, and that he lives in mortal fear of a ghostly wizard, Remstar, who is said to be beyond the Heartfires. There is also some group... well, he's, he's now in mortal fear of me because I, I killed him, or not at all, because he's dead. Anyway... Uh, there is also some gruesome notes concerning the Dark Elves' involvement in necromantic magic, uh, creating mutated monsters and using magic to animate them, with a reference to the Silver Room where these experiments were conducted. Now it's time to leave here and search elsewhere. Okay, so Remstar and Silver Room, I'll just write them down. 
silver room experiments. Necromantic experiments. There we go. What's the other thing? Yeah, Beyond the Heart Fire. Just write that down. Remstar Beyond the Heart Fires. Now it's time to leave here and search elsewhere. 2376. Alright, finally. You stand with your back to the doors at the end of the entrance hall, looking west. Immediately in front of you is another pair of double doors, while to the north, a passageway stretches out for many yards. Oh, it's this one again, for many yards. Yeah, it's this one again. Okay. Okay, this time... Yeah, we didn't need the luck point, did we? We already have maximum luck, yeah. Okay, this time we are going to... Um, open the first door along the north passage. So turn to 38. Okay, the great hearth in the north wall with its hobs and pots and roasting spits tells you that this must be the kitchen of the lower castle, though the fire has long been extinguished. To your left, there are some hatches in the wall, beyond which is a barely lit chamber. Peering in, you see that it is a huge feast hall, and you guess you could get into it through the double doors in the passage outside. You can't make out much of what is inside the feast hall unless you use a light spell. If you, if you can and wish to do this, turn to 279. Uh, you find an empty glass bottle in the kitchen, but nothing else of any use to you. You decide to take a chance on opening the door in the west wall of the kitchen, and you find that beyond it lies a, a small narrow passageway, off which you see a couple of tiny box rooms that the domestic servants must have occupied, and some large larder cupboards. It's highly unlikely that anything edible has been left after all these years, but if you want to make a search of them, turn to 27. Otherwise, you return to the doorway of the entrance hall to this castle level and choose another area to explore. Turn to 376. Okay, um, um, what are we going to do? Just a second, I'm just consulting my notes. Um, okay, so we're going to use a um, we're going to use a light spell. So we're going to have to use a, a magic point. Put it down to five, but we still have the magic ring, so it's not too bad. Yeah, we're going to use a light spell and turn to 279. The glaring light of your spell reveals a highly unpleasant scene within the feast hall, for the tables and chairs are crawling with fat, sleek, black rats. You make a mental note not to go in there. You decide to take a chance and open the door in the west wall of the kitchen, and you find that beyond it lies a small, narrow passageway, of which you see a couple of tiny box rooms the domestic servants must have occupied, and some large larder cupboards. It's highly unlikely there's anything edible left after all these years, but if you want to make a search of them, turn to 27. Otherwise, turn to 376 and search elsewhere in the castle. Okay, we're going to make a search of them. So, um, turn to 27. Was there actually another... just a second. Go back to 38. I'm slightly confused here, because that's exactly what I read there. Oh, I see. I shouldn't have... Oh, I see, right. 
I shouldn't have done that because I would, I would have found out. Oh, but never mind. I have take a glass bottle anyway. I'll take the glass bottle. Yeah. All I've all I've done is just all I've done is found that uh, that there are rats on there and not to explore it. So I've wasted a spell on that. Never mind. Anyway, so let's go back to um, 27 and then let's. Uh, Wait a minute, what, 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 what was I going to do? Not 27, I wanted to go to... Yeah, 279, that's right, yeah. Because I used the light spell, didn't I? Foolishly, I didn't... My notes were... were difficult to understand. Alright, um... You know, if you want to make a search of them... Turn to 27, otherwise turn to 276. And yeah, so we're going to make a search of them, so turn to 27. I shouldn't have wasted that spell, never mind. Not all doom and gloom. Right, well, what have we here? We have... A, um, corpse lizard, nasty. Ugh. Oh, he has a human hand, look. Human hand. Alright, so, sacks of mouldy flour, rotted seals, uh, cereals, smashed ceramic pots and decayed food greet you everywhere. But you also find some wax sealed jars of preserved fruits and, and gaba, a highly nutritious root vegetable from Far Crab Island. Add four to provisions and gain one luck point for this, for this fortune to find. I will use some provisions... And, it, and remember, it didn't say I can't use more than one. It did not say that. So I'm going to use two and put my uh, thing, add another eight uh, stamina points to put this up to 16 again. And then I'm going to add the four provisions back to here uh, to give me 12. Uh, put it back to 12 again. Because it didn't say I couldn't use two at once, remember. I checked. If I did, I apologise. Um, or rather, if I didn't check properly and I'm, I and I'm not allowed to use it, I apologise. Unfortunately, your pleasure at this discovery is marred when you hear a snuffling and squelching sound coming from the passage. Um, whatever's causing the noise is between you and the exit, so you move to investigate. What do you find are pools and disgust you. A white lizard-like thing, two metres long, with leprous purple ringed yeah, yellow blotches all over its face. Um, oh, no, all over its skin, rather. Um, worse still, the horror looks as if it has been stitched together from the body parts of various creatures, including a human or two, judging from its hand-like front paws. The gross thing hisses and spits a gobbet of filthy yellow phlegm at you. Test your skill. If you are successful, you avoid the missile, but if you fail, you take a face full of filth, which leaves you choking and sick, and you must subtract two from your attack strength during this combat. Okay, so we need to test our skill. So it needs to be less than or equal to 10. And we get 12. So we actually did take the, uh, the damage. So subtract 2 from your attack strength during this uh, during this combat. Fantastic news. Alright, so... Right, skill 7, stamina 9. So corpse lizard. Alright, skill 7, stamina 9. Okay, so let's go. So I have to subtract 2 for mine. So for all intents and purposes, my skill is now 8, not 10. Alright, so let's do it for him first. Skill 7. He gets an 8. That's 15. I get um, an 8. That's 16. So 15 to 16, I win. There's an extra space there. I don't want to. Alright, so he's down to, down to 7. Okay, next one. He gets a 5, that's uh, 12. I get an 11, that's 19. So, 12 to 19. Good, this one's going well. Famous last words, of course. Naturally. Can't be uh, can't be going well without the famous last words. Right. Okay, he gets a 9, there we go. 9 plus 7 is uh, 16. And I get a 4, there we go, that's 12. So, 16 to 12. I knew, I told you the famous last words, uh, famous last words, curse. So, 16, that was for him, and 12 for me, so he takes off 2. Good job I had those provisions. 
Okay, next. He gets an 8, that's 15. I get a 4, that's 12 again. So, uh, 15 to 12, he wins. Take off the stamina. Good job I found that food, I'll be needing it. Okay, he gets a 5, that's 12. I get an 8, that's 16. So, 12 to 16. means I win and he's down to three okay he gets an eight that's 15 I get a six that's uh, 14 so 15 to 14 he wins just again uh, this wouldn't be as difficult if I hadn't taken uh, rolled that annoying thing for the skill to subject two for my attack strength every time really irritating I actually got the 12 as well I failed the spot skill, even though the odds of getting a 12 are 1 in 36, and the odds of getting an 11 are 2 in 36. So the whole thing, the, the only way I could have lost, the, uh, the probability of losing, of, of uh, failing the spot skill is 3 out of 36, which is 1 out of one out of 12 probability. I actually got the 1 out of 12 probability. I mean, I could do that a million, a thousand times and that wouldn't happen. Unbelievable. Anyway, so we're doing it again. So he gets a 7, that's 14. I get a 4, that's 12. 14 to 12. Unbelievable. Down to 8 now again. Now he gets a 6, that's 13. I get a 9, that's uh, 15. So, 13 to 15. Can't seem to count. 13 to 15. That's down to 1. Alright, last one. I won't waste any magic. He, uh, he gets an 11. That's 18. I get a 7. That's 15. So, 18 to 15. Puts me down to 6. Right now, hopefully this is the last one. He gets an 11 again. That's 18. I get a 9. That's uh, 17. So uh, 19 to 17. He wins again. That puts me down to 4. We're dangerously close to dying now. So I might have to do this battle again. Right. Okay. He gets a 7. That's 14. I get a 9. That's uh, 17. So 14 to 17, I win. I just. That's the end of Mr. Corpse Lizard. Unbelievable how much health he took off me. Unbelievable. He's having a go at my rant. He's angry at my rant about the metric system. Right, anyway, if you win, you notice that the monster has left a slime trail behind it as it moved. If you want to track the route the monster took to get to here, 10 to 116. If you'd rather search elsewhere in the castle, 10 to 176. Okay, I'd rather... I'd rather search elsewhere in the castle, 10 to 376. Three hundred seventy-six. You stand with your. Oh yeah, this nonsense again. I've read that. I'm not read that a third time. Okay, so where are we going now? Let me just consult my notes. Okay, now we're going to head for the West Passage. Turn to three. You stand at the end of a long passageway, looking west. I will just quickly use some uh, provisions before I forget. Let's use loads of them. I need, let's, uh, let's use four of them. There's no, there's no stipulation saying I can't. So that will add four times four is sixteen. I'll add four uh, sixteen uh, uh, stamina points. That would put me up to twenty. That's quite good. Good. 
Right, OK. You stand at the end of a long passageway, looking west. You can see three doors along the south wall, and on the northern side there is a passageway leading off northwards between the first and second doors. There is also a door on the north side of the passage, directly opposite the third and most distant of the south-facing doors. At the far end of the western passage, a door faces you as the passage turns northwards. You feel sure that this passageway leads deeper into the heart of Castle Argent. Choose an area here which you have not which you have not explored. Will you make for the first door to the south, turn to 320, the second door to the south, turn to 144, the north side passage, turn to 218, the third door to the south, turn to 378, the single door to the north, turn to 196, or the far end of the west passage, turn to 357. And we shall decide what to do in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and my rant about the metric system. And I hope you can join me for part three in which I will decide which way to go. So thanks again and goodbye.